Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Recently I've been missing doing book recommendation and review videos so I wanted to bring them back in a completely self-indulgent way, recommending books that inspired my own book, Paper Forests. This is a list of books that I joke about being the unofficial Paper Forest reading list, featuring dark fairy tale retellings by sexuals who can't make good decisions, horror influences, whimsical forests that may or may not be sentient, and magic and monsters. Paper Forest is a loose, handsome and gruttle retelling about teenagers trapped in a sentient forest afterlife, and I hope these books truly capture that spirit. The Wicked King by Kay Ankrum When August learns that his best friend Jack shows signs of degenerative hallucinatory disorder, he is determined to help Jack cope. Jack's vivid and long-term visions take the form of an elaborate fantasy world laid over our own, a world ruled by the Wicked King. As Jack leads him on a quest to fulfil a dark prophecy in this alternate world, even August begins to question what is real or not. August and Jack struggle to keep afloat as they teeter between fantasy and their own emotions. In the end, each must choose his own truth. This book so deeply means a lot to me. I think the thing that stands out most to me is how you can do your best and still fail, but it's not your fault. It's really brutal and sad and yet beautiful. It's about mental illness and codependency and unhealthy relationships and neglect and kids just trying to cope the best they can. It is a flawed story about flawed boys, but can we rewrite into the part where I just said they're trying to cope and hold the world on their shoulders the best they can, and they absolutely mess up. But they try. I also think this is the kind of book that is more than just words on a page. There's lots of suppressed feelings and emotions and underlying psychological reasons and causes. So go and expecting kids to mess up, because they do. My heart still sort of beats messily all over the place for this book, and these boys and their illnesses and their story, which is part magic and part poison. I also want to give a disclaimer that one of my characters is also called August, but he was named long before I read this book, but the second he was named I started seeing the name everywhere. I also read this for the first time as an ebook, and it truly paled in comparison to the beauty of the physical copies, where the pages get darker along with the story. Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston Keras is safe in the Kingdom of Gloria. Here there are no droughts, disease, famine, and peace is everlasting. It's been this way for hundreds of years since the first king made a bargain with the lady who ruled the forest that borders the kingdom. But as Gloria prospered, the woods grew dark, cursed, and forbidden. Keras knows this all too well. When she was young, she barely escaped as the woods killed her friends and her mother. Now, Keras carries a small bit of curse, the magic in her blood, a reminder of the day she lost everything. The most danger she faces now, as a gardener's daughter, is the annoying fox who stalks the royal gardens and won't leave her alone. As a new creed is crowned, however, things long hidden in the woods descend on the kingdom itself. Keras is forced on the run, her only companions the small fox from the garden, a strange and powerful bear, and the magic in her veins. It's up to her to find the legendary Lady of the Wilds and beg for a way to save her home, but the road is darker and more dangerous than she knows, and the secrets from the past are uncovered amid the teeth and roots of the forest is going to take everything she has just to survive. This book was wonderful in a very quiet, classic way, yet the world building is still breathtaking and vivid and whimsical. It opened to the simple and quaint part of the kingdom of Keras, the gardener's teenage daughter who has magic literally in her blood that marks her survival from the curse in the woods. She's best friends with the royal heir and a mischievous and melodramatic fox who quickly becomes my favourite character. The majority of this book takes place on a journey through the forest. Forest settings are the love of my life, especially as someone who basically grew up in the trees. The descriptions really emphasise the creepiness, and I love the attention to detail on those affected by the curse, as well as the other monsters hidden in the shadows. Some of the plot at this point is predictable, but it follows a traditional fairy tale way of storytelling. It definitely made up for lacked elements in other areas, especially in the slow burn romance. The bickering and banter brought the characters and the chemistry to life, and I was entertained, even if I knew how it was going to end. The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones 17-year-old Arun only cares about two things, her family and her family's graveyard, and right now both are in dire straits. Since the death of their parents, Rin and her siblings have been scraping together a meagre existence as gravediggers in the remote village of Colbran, which sits at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem of being a gravedigger in Colbran, though, is that the dead don't always stay dead. The risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says are the result of a decades-old curse. When Ellis, an apprentice map maple from Sirius Past, arrives in town, the bone houses attack with a new ferocity. What is that that draws them near? And, more importantly, how can they be stopped for good? This is another book I've fallen completely in love with, due to it hitting so many of my niche interests. A tough gravedigger girl, a soft nut maker boy who can never find his way, and their undead goat adventure through mountains and folklore to face the curse of risen corpses and long hidden truths about themselves. It's a story about folk tales and magic and family and undead corpses. I didn't expect to love a story that is about, in summary, zombies so much. 
The author did such a wonderful job of showing her through the perspective of myths and legends, and also removed a lot of the horror element, creating something that felt like it could have held a role in a fairy tale rather than a nightmare. And it's exciting to see how well urban tales and folklore mix with the horror genre. One thing about this book that meant a lot to me is that Ellis has chronic pain in his shoulder and it doesn't disappear by the end of the book as it some injuries tend to do in fantasy. The author talks about the toll it has on his body throughout the journey and as someone with chronic pain it's wonderful to see a character who lives with it and can still have adventures. House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland 17 year old Iris Hollow has always been strange. Something happened to her and her two older sisters when they were children, something they can't quite remember but left each of them with an identical half moon scar at the base of their throats. Iris has spent most of her teenage years trying to avoid the weirdness that sticks to her like tar, but when her eldest sister Grey goes missing under suspicious circumstances, Iris learns just how weird her life can get. Horned men start shadowing her, a corpse falls out of her sister's ceiling, and ugly impossible memories start to twist their way to the forefront of her mind. As Iris retraces Grey's last known footsteps and follows the increasingly bizarre trail of breadcrumbs she left behind, it becomes more apparent that the only way to save her sister is to decipher the mystery of what happened to them as children. The closer Iris gets to the truth, the closer she comes to understanding that the answer is dark and dangerous, and that Grey has been keeping a terrible secret from her for years. There are so many things that I loved about this book. Sutherland's writing is beautiful, something which I had doubts about before I started reading, as I had a mixed experience with some of her previous works. It has an incredible fairy tale esque rhythm that makes the story alluring and atmospheric and exquisite and eerie. There's some beautiful descriptions of character appearances, the close grey designs, and the environments that they explore, I was drawn in from the first page. I think the thing that I love the most about the writing is that it doesn't shy away from showing the ugly side and the rotting interior beneath all of the beauty. Grey is a fascinating character. She describes herself as the thing in the dark, and as a sister who has used her newfound powers for her benefit. She's beautiful and dangerous, and uses the mystery of the sister's past to create a mystery for her public persona. In another universe, she would fit in perfectly as a villain. House of Hollow is a captivating read that had me hanging on to every single word, somehow combining a missing person story and a subversive fairy tale and horror elements that kept me up at night. And those are the four books that most influenced the writing process for Paper Forest, all part magic and part monstrous. Please let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books and if you have recommendations that are in the same queer spooky forest realm. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!